I'm so sorry you've been abused by me, but I hit delete and I'm like David. I'm after God's own heart. I'm back in the presence of God. <laughs> Welcome back to IHOP KC Secrets. I'm Anastasia. Hey guys, it's Shelby. Welcome back to IHOP KC Secrets. This episode, so you guys know, um, we usually try to keep things pretty lighthearted with humor, a few laughs here and there, but this episode is a little bit weightier. We've really been grieving and processing everything that's going on in Kansas City and the greater body of Christ. And so just a little, this episode's a little bit different. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We'll be just sewing together a lot of different thoughts from a lot of different places and hopefully it resonates with your heart too yeah good so what happened last night so last night it hit me again everything that has been happening with the house prayer i was falling asleep it's been a very very cold winter here in kansas city last week it was actually colder here than it was in alaska just to give some context wow. so it's been like negative three with like wind chill so it's just been cold i think the cold does something to your heart i'm gonna be for real like it just makes your heart aware that you need god and you need com the comfort of the holy spirit but anyways last night i was falling asleep and i started crying little winter blues just some things i've been processing with the lord and then a fresh wave of everything that happened with IHOP hit me again. I mean, I had to say it was like 1230 at night. I think I texted you. You texted me back in the morning. I mean, everyone was sleeping, like just a, a huge paragraph. But that moment where you kind of realize it's like that betrayal moment where you realize, wow, nothing is ever the same. And it was an, it was a unique pain. It, it felt deep in my soul. This whole situation with IHOP has been a tearing, like an absolute tearing. No one could could have foreseen it. I think about the body of Christ and how this wound now has been created within the body of Christ of we thought we could trust this person with our whole heart and he's admirable and righteous and loves God and preaches on purity and holiness. And then he is um, fully exposed and has betrayed his own heart. He's been a wolf betrayed in the Lord. Sort of thing. Yeah. And betrayed the every person that's gone there. And it's like really painful. It's wild. Um, I don't, don't even know fully why I'm struggling to communicate how I feel about this on camera. It almost feels surreal. It actually comes in waves. Like if we could have been you know, recording last night, or I would have called you when I was crying. We would have seen the raw emotion now kind of talking about it. It kind of like becomes, it kind of disappears. Yes, it comes it, in waves. It's, it's bizarre that that's how, yeah. Like right now, I don't feel that pain on my heart, but last night I cried myself to sleep. And I will say that the first week, I found everything out. I think I cried myself to sleep for like four or five days. Um, just this, it's like without words. You're just like, wait, what's happening? Now, is that when you read about Kansas City prophets? No, but so with trauma, um, it could have been actually. So with trauma, things happen so quick in your brain that some of that I can't even remember. Like, remember how on our first episode you read back the text? I don't even remember you texting that. It's kind of like a car accident or when someone witnesses a crime and then they say it's one way, but then um, a couple of days later they say, actually, this is what happened. Like some of their memory comes back. I mean, I was hearing from people from all over the the country all of my old friends and colleagues no one knew what was going on and social media was blowing up and people couldn't fathom and when this first happened there was a very large camp of people who it was very divided there was a large camp of people who said mike is innocent these are false allegations because these people want to take over the church or something i don't know or because everything at IHOP is so spiritualized with, with the prophetic language is so spiritualized that it's like we're too far up in the clouds and we lose like the practicals. Yeah. For example, oh, if something speaks out against Mike, it's not that he actually did something. It's that um, it's the accuser of the brethren. It's He's Satan. Attacked. It's the black horse. This has already been prophesied. So there was this huge camp of people that thought that. And then there was this other camp of, I mean, I literally had friends calling him disgusting. And that was really hard for me to hear too. I was like, no, 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 no. We can't say that yet. Like, that's so harsh. Like, that's yeah. so harsh. You didn't and believe it. It just cut my heart. Like, it just cut my heart. I'm like, well, 
well, for one, as Christians, who it, any of us to call another Christian disgusting? I mean, we all have fallen short of God's glory. Our, we've all done disgusting things without the blood of Jesus. So it was just trauma after trauma after trauma. It was finding out, then having people I love say, this is a disgusting man. This is a predator. And you're just finding out. You're like, wait, what do you mean? Because in the first stage of grief, it's denial. And so I was in denial for a while. I want to say almost probably month yeah three weeks i would say about three weeks and that's about right about three weeks which yes. is a long time if you think about it yeah because i know we initially and talked day- to- no go ahead go ahead I was just gonna say i remember we initially talked about it you were definitely at that moment kind of like leaning towards okay yeah maybe he is guilty a little bit you're a little bit of your practical was coming out but then right away you were like but you know innocent until proven guilty innocent and proven guilty. you don't yeah. know yet we don't know yet and then yeah about three weeks four weeks later you were like well then it started coming out yeah well right? then just after the initial shock wore off i just settled i remember i just settled i think i was doing hair and i was like okay um This was a man who was once 40 and the allegations have to do with someone who's like 19, 20 and they're doing ministry together. They're going to other countries and ministering. And I was just thinking of how something like that could happen. And so one day it just switched. I go, you know what? He probably did do that. He probably did have sex with these different women. He probably maybe said, hey, my wife's going to die. Don't worry. We can kind of do this now because she's going to die anyways. And we could link back up. I mean, it's dark. That's dark. That's dark. Really dark. However, marriage is such an intricate and deep bonding covenant relationship that even when someone makes that abrasion, He could have confessed to Diane and said, I'm so sorry I did do that. And that's why they stay married. I don't think that she just found out about it this year. There's no way. I think she's... Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Uh, Maybe, yeah. So I think it's really interesting that I've been hearing that um, his wife still goes to the prayer room. I cut a pastor's hair today, a pastor from New York. And his main question to me um, was, so what do you think is going to happen, Shelby? I said the entire leadership team resigned and now there's general colonel. There's someone else, you know, (laughs) running it. And he was he was just shaking his head the whole time. He said the model of having one basing a ministry off of one man's prophecies was just not biblical. I'm it's actually starting to hit me again. I'm actually starting to feel the wave of sorrow again because when I'm talking to these pa- these local pastors in Kansas City, this man just looked at me and and shook his head and he goes, "Well, how many women were alleged?" And I was like, 10. And then he didn't even want to hear anymore. I was like, "About 10." And he was like, "I can't." And he was like, "This always." This happens a lot if there's one person at the top. He's like, it's not healthy. It's not a biblical structure. There's no accountability. And then he told a story of a church in Kansas City about 10 years ago, a mega church, where something um, similar happened. Mm. And so, yeah, I think, you know, what really hit me last night was none of this would be happening if it wasn't a trauma. And it, it it's a trauma to the body of Christ. Like it created a wound. And, you know, the definition of trauma is that a shocking event that rewrites your brain pathways your neural pathways to where they are never the same again because it was just so harsh and so intense and that's what happened yeah I'm, and I actually said that today to the pastor when I was cutting his hair I'm like it's never gonna be the same like the man who created it is now no longer allowed to come ever again the one who founded IHOP is never allowed to go to the room again and then the people who were underneath him have resigned and we don't even know where they're at well, and it's they're all still, very they're still there they're still there they're just not on the leadership team anymore oh how do you know that because they're on the website it says that they're speaking next month so i found on x and well maybe we could get it up on the screen that um it was everything so sloppy it was um is it old it was a, it, that got canceled oh okay yeah so um yeah the guy kept pressing me what do you think is gonna happen and i was like i don't know i said it was precious to me and my time at bible college was precious precious to me he goes of course of course um but yeah it was an interesting talk with him for sure. I got to get my uh, charger. Hold on. Cause it says right. Mac about to die. All right. Okay. Don't eat too much peanut butter, baby. Wait. So what was that Misty LLC with Rex name is Comer? Okay. So the Misty LLC girl, I just, it's just like, what? That's an odd name for a 
trucking company. I find that very bizarre, especially because Rex has allegations of abusing a minor that are public. You can look up the the um, court records and that's disturbing. I'm sorry. I don't know why you would name your company after a worship leader that you're not related to. Um, Kansas City is known to be a human trafficking hub. So with all of the highways in the country. So I do think it's bizarre that they would name a company a tra- after a young woman. Why? Words. Why would you do that? What's really going on here? How deep does this go? I remember when I saw that, I read that today about the Misty LLC and I was um, like on a break at work and my whole body had a chill. I'm not going to lie. When I was- So pe- for people though that don't know about who this Rex guy is, do you want to explain him? So Rex was around at the beginning of the House of Prayer. He's good friends with Mike. Mike takes a vacation every um, January to, to Florida. Florida. It's well known. He always talks about it from the stage. And and Rex um, poured in money into the house prayer. He's a sponsor. He's a donor. And um, he also has charges of soliciting a minor and sex crimes with a minor. So when was that? Um, I'm not sure. We'd have to look up the documents. Maybe 25 years ago. I don't know if him and Hartley are friends. What do you know about him? Well, I know that he was sending photos of himself in towels to like, <laughs> to like women and, so... wanting to, and wanting to pay them prostitution oh, I, I do there, not there are pictures of him oh them together that's what i thought i saw the bob hartley thing is unfortunate you know it's interesting when people like this get exposed i i don't um really feel any joy in that do you remember how mike's um office had that like what is it like in an interrogation room where it's a double yeah, black the, like, the deadbolt the, the, no the double mirror so he can see out and watch but you can't see in do you remember that no i didn't realize that that little office off to the side. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? Without Spur? I think it's going to collapse. It's just a matter of time. You think it's going to reorganize? I think that, honestly, I don't have a clear answer. I would be lying if I said I don't feel, I feel heightened in the spirit, meaning I don't even know if this has reached a full crescendo yet of how bad it could get. I feel like it's already been really bad, but I I feel like it could get worse. Um, Just an, a subtle impression I have, you know, not giving. No, I agree with that. It's not, it's not a prophetic word. I didn't have a dream, but it's just very, very weighty. Um, and details I, are still vague. The details are still vague. And it's just, I, I, do you not get the sense that there's a lot more going on than we even know? Yes. And then I also wonder how deep does it go? And then how much like, is think just about it. people's as soon as Mike, As soon as Mike is alleged, he flies in a high level PR guy from Los Angeles that to literally meet with him before he even meets with his best friends. If you had any and then shred turned away of, his best friends. Yeah, if you had any shred of innocence, you would be like, "Hey, yo, I love you guys. You know I didn't do this." Period. You wouldn't hire a private attorney and a PR person immediately to represent you. And then hide yourself away from all your friends. Do you feel like he has to be kind of like sulking and depressed over this or do you think he's just So if you read the emails that were released um between him, recently? No, the ones from him and Jane Doe's husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, I remember those. He said it's the great the greatest pain of the great he's experiencing one of the greatest pains of his life at the end of his life which i actually think is pretty sad too but i mean he did it to himself yeah i know i feel god's name under god's name i feel like that's the type of stuff where it's still hard for me to process that and i think it's gonna take me years to process that a while i can't i can't comprehend it because it's so dark and evil because the foundation of ihop is purity holiness whole heart for Jesus, nothing hidden. Jesus is coming back. Revelation 19, faithful and true with fire in his eyes, a sword. He's going to uncover. He's going to shake everything that can be shaken. The man who is promoting these teachings for 30 years is live, living a life, a double life of sin, telling people his wife's going to die and seducing them and doing sex acts. Come on. No, no movie script can even write that. 30 years and Eric Volt said 25 5,000 people, I bet way more, way more. I would guess hundreds of thousands of people stream the prayer room and it reaches to the ends of the earth. One third of the population of people who go to the house prayer are Asian too. So it reaches those countries. Yeah. So the reverb in the spirit is really weighty. I mean, Mike, I remember Mike would always preach on, it's a blessing if you're exposed before men, because then when you get to heaven, you won't be exposed <laughs> heaven. Do you remember that teaching? Well, he's just 
Mm -hmm. And then you realize you're like, I think there's a level of delusion. There has to be or some type of dissociation between he compares himself to David. So he's probably like, yeah, like I did those things, but I repented quickly and I press delete and I move on. And that's the thing where it's missing the accountability. So I'll give you an example of the press delete method. So I'm having a bad day. I'm crabby. I haven't got my morning coffee. I decide to go to a park. There's a very annoying dog there and it's someone's pet, but the dog is annoying. I haven't ate. I'm not in a good mood. So I decide to um, kick the dog and hurt the dog and I break the dog's leg. And then the owner of the dog is, and so now the dog is limping. The dog has been abused. And so the owner of the dog is like, hey, what the heck? This is my dog. This is a public dog park. What are you doing? That was so intense. And I go, oh, Sue, I actually just repented for that. I hit delete. I'm so sorry your dog has been abused by me, but I hit delete and I'm like David. I'm after God's own heart. I'm back in the presence of God. I'm actually heading to the prayer room. Hey, you know, your dog, whatever. Bye. That's yeah, that's a good example. It's a small comparison of what's going on with Mike, except Mike didn't even acknowledge that he wronged these women in his statement. He said my moral shortcomings, but I'm not admitting to anything. Yeah. I do think that we have to realize that this is a legal situation and we are not privy to that necessarily yet if it's actually going to go to a court. We're not necessarily privy to all of these documents. So maybe legally the only thing he's allowed to say is my moral shortcoming. So people really coming down on him on that statement. What is he going to say? What is he going to say? Yeah, I had oral sex in the back of the prayer room. Sorry about it. I mean, would have people felt more satisfied? Would people have felt more satisfied? I think we like laugh a little bit because it's so uncomfortable. I mean, what did we think the public statement was going to say? Yeah, I had sex with a bunch of different women and I, you know, whatever. Sorry. It wouldn't have made us feel any better. It's already um, out there. It's already egregious. It wouldn't have made, we don't need to know the nitty gritty details. I personally don't want to know. Wait, but so at that point when he gave his statement, that was before emails with Jane Doe's husband were leaked. It all came out at the same time. Okay. So it's kind of all happening. All within the same time. Okay. So I don't really find the Jane Doe emails and please tell me your take on this. I don't really find them personally that incriminating. They're just kind of like babble. He wrote them how he writes notes. Did you notice that? The email? Yeah, from what I remember though, that they they were pretty serious. He was pretty, he was accusing the husband or the Jane Doe. For me, I I thought it was intense. Maybe I can pull it up. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not saying they weren't intense. I do think that they were intense. They kind of gave the vibe that he was spiraling. Hey, I've had a really long day of meetings um, and I'm still spiraling from our meeting earlier. Please don't meet me with the group. Right. It's sad. It's sad when you get exposed. I honestly wish that, I wish that um when this stuff first happened, back when he was 40 and this girl was 20, I wish he would have come clean to whoever's on leadership team then and said, you know what, guys, I really missed the mark. I've been fooling around on my wife. I've been in sexual sin. And um, he didn't do that. No. That would have been a game changer. But also he probably would not have been allowed to lead IHOP. And oh, that absolutely would... not. So if you think of the reverb, it happened the way it happened. I can't go back now, but it is interesting to think about. Oh, my no. God. So it was a six page email that he wrote. Oh, yeah. You found it. Let's go through it. Must have been also to the other person. And Mike he, Pickle is really in a pickle. But he sent it to himself too. Oh no, to Rebecca Hopkins. He forwarded it to himself. I think that's how it leaked. I don't know. Subject, this is my last email on this. Sorry, it is a bit rambling because I am writing this real fast and I am in between a day full of meetings, just like you said. This is my last email. I have been in and out of meetings since I left you at 10 a.m. today. I am sorry. I am not clear-minded right now and I am exhausted, but I am still swirling and hurting. I just want to clarify that when I wrote in my last email uh, some hours ago saying it was my most painful day. Mm. Okay, that was like a run-on sentence with no point. One, I do not mean painful because of her conversation with you. I am okay with you in the conversation. I trust you and your ways. Two, I do not even mean because others, including me, would be greatly hurt if blah, blah, blah. However, I can not imagine the relational anguish and confusion it would cause in the multi-level long-term sovereign relationship with IHOP and must be Jane Doe's name. What is painful is the thought of being told a certain narrative that is not the narrative I believe that God has, and then they will pass it on. That would constitute the greatest betrayal of my life from one of my Ugh. dearest friends who I trusted 100%. The shame. the shame. It would be a far worse betrayal than what Ernie Gruen did to me in 1990. Far more 
more personally painful and relationally destructive. So is he talking about Hood betraying him by talking about it? No, he's talking about Jane Doe. They were friends. Oh. She worked with him at IHOP for 30 years. It it makes me sick and it makes me feel like a lot of things in the prophetic vein aren't safe, like prophecies, because yeah. we were always taught at the House of Prayer to not prophesy dates, mates, and babies. You just don't go there. You don't tell someone you're marrying this person, you're having this many kids, and you're moving to Africa. It's like against the rules. So why this is so weighty and so painful is that Mike egregiously broke rules and abused the spirit of prophecy and created mixture yeah and it's it's um it's painful because it's a gift from the lord and it's it was, like it was manipulated for his own selfishness he does deny saying that he said that in a statement i deny ever saying that my wife was gonna die so when it comes down to that it's their word against his so i wasn't there i don't know if he said that or not so he's but it did say really manipulative and dark. So Anastasia, so what are your thoughts? How do you think, do you think we would benefit hearing from Mike? Like do a talk, break this down, do a video, release it on YouTube. Brings Well, if, if it was, if he was repenting and right. explaining himself away, which is not okay, but like if at least there's, at least there's that, it brings him closure, but that's it. I feel like anything else short of that would be, it would just burn more speculation. How will this wound ever heal if he never says anything i think about that sometimes too like probably reconciliation be- it's called reconciliation without confrontation you 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 reconcile without ever talking about it it's hard a lot of families do that my family does that mm-hmm. and then they when your family comes together they just never they're just it's like hey, never happened I you. never happened. Oh, oh okay we don't even talk about it whatever <laughs> whatever happened just right everyone just <laughs> right they keep the show moving so yeah reconciliation without confrontation uh but i was just walking the other day and I outside and my thought was that just talking to God and he was like the thought came to me that he can heal us in a moment from this right and it doesn't yeah. even have to affect us or impact us any longer we don't even have to put our mind there so that's kind of where I get convicted like doing this because right because of that because who he doesn't need us to do this right, right. to help people he can do oh he, for sure you know he can heal people in a moment yeah agree so that's how I think people are going to move on which just sounds crazy and the world wouldn't understand that because it the natural way to say to go about it would be years of therapy and right. processing and that's the politically correct way that's what society says is the right way which is one of the ways i think that god uses it i also think that you know holy spirit's the comforter and the healer yeah. and jesus is yeah. the healer amen so that's what the word says however those things have been wrapped up now in all this weirdness and mixture so it's hard to even sometimes believe it but it's written on our hearts and we just have to just believe it yeah that is really beautiful the healed in a moment thing i think that yeah how do you think i think we might be in a phase where there's like this kind of how i was crying myself to sleep last night there's over this like there's this right now i think there's this corporate cry and tearing deep within everyone who ever has gone to ihop to where it's like a baby crying right like it's just like this it's really deep it's like like wailing yes like deep 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 and i think that the moment that we're in now but i do think that moment of of the father's love and a baptism of his love on our hearts and the revelation of who Jesus is can come in a moment and heal us. And yeah. I think it can be really beautiful. But I do think right now we're still, people are- It doesn't take away the way that we're going to feel. Eric is still doing updates. Bob Hartley is being accused of paying women for sex. And right. he just prayed in the prayer room a couple weeks ago. Now he's no longer allowed to go there. But there's- I just feel some- like sets up a certain kind of press now though because as soon as I heard that because now it's like they can ban anyone from the prayer room which of course they should have banned him but like at the same time it's kind of what are the laws are they you know what I mean do they have laws for it no I, I mean it's a prayer room right I mean, exactly it's like a live public like library it. you just get to go unless yeah, like Bob can shave his head and wear different clothes and go in there with Travis Kelsey like what are they gonna do <laughs> I mean they could escort him out but that's actually a really good question I know that security does have a list of people people who if they come in you know they get kicked out or escorted out but also security can be maybe not always paying attention I'm sure stuff slips through the cracks I mean there's all the, there's always been rumors for 10 years that witches come in and they curse the people on stage and then they're not allowed to come but they still are always there I personally think that that's, that could be true but I haven't I'm, oh there's you know, Glenda the 
good witch over in the corner bewitching. Could be. I mean, she could be. Probably at that it, Halloween meeting with Chris Reed. Yeah, that was like everyone was under a weird spell. Yeah, that. yeah. That was bizarre. Dave Syker goes, I've never been more excited to take communion with you guys. And I go, what? You've never been more excited to take communion with a bunch of people who just found out their leader has betrayed everyone? No one, no one, what? I literally was like, I'm not covenanting myself any deeper with these people. I'm leaving. Hey guys, thank you so much for um, listening to IHOPKC Secrets. We would love to hear your feedback, how you guys are feeling about the current situation that's unfolding. We would love for you to like, comment, and subscribe for continued updates. We want to hear from you and we want to start some dialogue in the comments. All of this stuff is super weighty and intense. I personally have shed many tears over it, even last night. It comes in waves and so I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one.